Training camp preview for the Cincinnati Bengals. What do you need to know about the Bengals going into training camp this year? Key position battles, players to look out for. Let's get into one of the most important position battles in all of the NFL. The starting right tackle spot for the Cincinnati Bengals. This is going to be really key to Cincinnati having a good offensive line this year. I'm pretty confident that you solved your issues at left tackle by signing Orlando Brown to a lucrative contract. You got two really good offensive guards. You're set at center. Your only biggest bugaboo going into this season is who the hell is going to be starting at right tackle? Now, you have several options at right tackle. You got Jonah Williams, who is expected to be the favorite to win that starting job. He's moving over from left tackle to right tackle. And he was not good last year. He gave up 12 to 13 sacks at left tackle. And you got to remember that Jonah Williams was a guy who was a former first round pick by Cincinnati in the 2019 NFL draft. So at this point, if he doesn't end up being able to have a serviceable season at right tackle, you pretty much could label this guy a bust. And this is also a big year for him because he's trying to get another contract. And he asked for a trade right after the Cincinnati Bengals signed Orlando Brown. But I guess the Bengals couldn't find any trade partners for Jonah Williams. So he still remains with the Bengals going into camp. And most Bengals fans do expect him to win the starting right tackle job. Lyle Collins, we don't even know if he's going to be healthy for any point of training camp. He is expected to be put on the pup list, which stands for player unable to perform. And he was a huge disappointment last year. You got to remember that they signed Lael Collins to a three-year, $21 million contract in free agency last offseason. And not only was he a massive disappointment at right tackle for Cincinnati in 2022, but he also got hurt near the tail end of the season, tearing his ACL and PCL against New England. So he probably won't be available for the starter training camp, but they do have second round pick from the 2021 NFL draft, Jackson Carmen. Now Jackson Carmen came in at left tackle in replace of Jonah Williams when he got hurt and he played pretty well in the postseason for Cincinnati. He played well against the Buffalo Bills. I also feel like he played pretty good against the Baltimore Ravens the game before that in the wild card round now some people equate the success that Jackson Carmen had in the postseason due to the fact that he had conditions from the weather that kind of were favorable for him due to the fact that they were playing in snow so it's kind of hard for pass rushers to be really effective when you got to deal with the snow but Jackson Carmen is probably the guy who's going to end up competing with Jonah Williams for the starting right tackle spot, at least until we can figure out the extent to when Lyle Collins is going to be healthy to return. The next position battle that we got to look at for the Cincinnati Bengals is strong safety. Now, this may not be one of those position battles that you look at and you're like, oh, is this really a position battle? Because you do feel pretty good about Nick Scott being your starting safety this year, I think that he can give you pretty solid play from that strong safety position. But you got to remember that you lost Jesse Bates and Von Bell. Now, I think that Cincinnati was prepared to lose Von Bell, but I don't really think they were expecting to lose their other starting safety neither. So you're trying to replace two safeties. You already got Dax Hill, who you drafted in the first round, who's going to end up being one of those replacement, but who's going to end up being the other starting safety? And like I said, Nick Scott was a solid pickup by Cincinnati in free agency. He spent his last couple of years in the league with the LA Rams. He helped lead them to the Super Bowl. He had a pretty significant impact on that championship team and last year was his first season ever as the full-time starter for the Rams. And one thing about Nick Scott is that He's not bad at anything in particular, but he's not great at anything. He doesn't really have any outstanding skills that stands out to you. And last year, he had 86 tackles, two interceptions, two forced fumbles. So this is somebody who is a pretty good tackler in the open field. He can lay a big hit out on you. He also isn't too bad at coverage, but I think there's a good possibility he could get challenged by rookie safety 
Jordan Battle, who the Cincinnati Bengals drafted in the third round from this past year's draft out of Alabama. And I was a huge fan of Jordan Battle when he was coming out. He may not be as athletically gifted as a guy like Dax Hill is, but this is somebody who has high football IQ. During his time at Bama, he always seemed to be in the right position during the right time to make big plays and he also has the versatility to play both strong and free safety for Cincinnati and he's really good in coverage so Luana Rumo can unveil some three safety sets that has three safeties on the field you can put Jordan Battle in the slot if you want him to match up against slot receivers or you can have him close to the line of scrimmage guarding out against running backs and tight ends and coverage I just think that Jordan Battle is too good of a player not to have on the field and I do think that there's a strong chance that he could end up winning that starting safety job over our guy Nick Scott from the LA Rams now some players that I'm going to be watching throughout training camp for the Cincinnati Bengals first of all I'm going to start with rookie cornerback DJ Turner he was one of my favorite cornerbacks coming out of this past year's draft this dude is really sticky in coverage he has good technique good fundamentals and he is incredibly athletic And he's one of the more athletic cornerbacks that have came out of the draft within the last couple of years. This dude ran a 4-2-6 40-yard dash. And he also is able to change his direction on the whim. He has pretty good hips. He's fluid in his movements and motions. So if we end up seeing Cam Taylor Britt, who is supposed to be spotted in at that other cornerback spot on the opposite side of Chidobio Wuzie, if he ends up struggling this year... We probably are going to see DJ Turner being the next man up. I think that DJ Turner was a very great pick for the Cincinnati Bengals in round two. And I would even be surprised if he ends up playing so well during the preseason and performs well throughout training camp that maybe he ends up pushing Cam Taylor Britt down the depth chart for that other cornerback spot because Cam Taylor Britt. Yeah, he had some good moments during his rookie season, and he played pretty well during the postseason, but you got to remember that you got a guy like DJ Turner coming out of Michigan who had a really great defense and somebody who has this kind of athleticism and also is a little bit more fundamentally sound than what Cam Taylor Britt is. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up hearing some rumblings the first couple of days throughout camp about how good DJ Turner is and how he could end up competing for Cam Taylor Britt for that other starting cornerback job. Now, obviously, we're going to keep our eyes on Cam Taylor Britt because he was a rookie who was asked to step up in a major way last season for Cincinnati when... Chidobio Wuzier got injured and I think that he did a pretty good job he was a top 10 rookie cornerback based on the metrics and statistics for rookie cornerbacks last season but I still feel like there's more to be desired with him we still have to wait and see so I want to see how he's going to match up against these wide receivers in training camp because me being a Steelers fan I remember a couple of years ago when Artie Burns kept going up against Antonio Brown in training camp and everybody was hyping up Artie Burns for having the wherewithal to go against Antonio Brown and challenge himself, but every time I was watching clips of their 1v1s, Artie Burns was getting burned. No pun intended. So is Cam Taylor Britt going to end up being the guy that we hear a lot of hype around, but when the tape comes out, he doesn't really end up looking all that good? Or is he going to be somebody who we hear clamping up guys like Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd throughout training camp? Because If you're a cornerback, you're getting some of the best work that you can get when you have the best receiving core in the NFL that you're going to be practicing against every single day. So I want to hear a lot of good things from Cam Taylor Britt. That cornerback spot outside of Chidobio Wuzie is going to be a really big position to watch if you're a Bengals fan, not just throughout training camp, but throughout the whole entire season. Because if you can have two Chidobio Wuzier's not just including him but two cornerbacks on his caliber you should have a pretty good secondary I'm not really worried about Dax Hill I think Nick Scott can be solid but I would like for Jordan Battle to take that starting role from him eventually some point throughout this year so really if you can get your second cornerback spot secured 
you should have a really fantastic defense this year. And the Bengals have always had really good defenses under Lou Anarumo, but something that kind of held them back was the cornerback position when Chidobio Wuzier went down with that injury. It wasn't a liability, but it wasn't a strength. So if you can get good play out of Cam Taylor Britt, I think that your secondary could be really good this year. And you got to remember that you're moving away from Eli Apple. Eli Apple wasn't a terrible starter like how many people make him out to be in the national media. He was really productive at times. So you can do a lot worse than the Eli Apple. So I got to keep my eyes on Cam Taylor Britt. Running back Chase Brown, fifth round selection out of Illinois. This is somebody who a good amount of Bengals fans have a lot of excitement about. And the sentiment is that he potentially is going to be the guy who pushes out Joe Mixon. Now, I don't think that Chase Brown is going to push Joe Mixon that much for the RB1 role this year. And I don't really think that he's going to have as big as an impact as a lot of Cincinnati Bengals fans are hoping he will have. I think that Joe Mixon, without a question, is the RB1 for Cincinnati at this moment. I don't expect that to really change. I expect him to get the bulk load of the carries. And when you look at Chase Brown, he is a pretty solid running back. I watched a lot of him coming out of Illinois, very tough. This is somebody who has solid vision, really good speed and acceleration, but he has a fumbling issue, which really concerns me. And then two, he's more of a one cut back. All right, this is somebody who makes one cut and gone. But outside of that, he doesn't really have a lot of elusiveness. He does have some high yards after contact numbers, but when I watch him, I don't really see somebody who consistently breaks through tackles. I see somebody who kind of wins more off his one cut ability and his speed and acceleration. So I still think that Chase Brown is far from a finished product that Cincinnati is getting. And I also love me some Travion Williams. And I was a big fan of him when he was coming out of Texas A&M. If we're having like a conversation, about any position battle being taking place in this running back room, it probably should be for the RB2 spot that Cincinnati currently has because you got to remember that they lost to my JP run in free agency. So who's going to be the backup behind Joe Mixon? Could it be Travion Williams or Chase Brown? I guess we will see, but I got to keep my eyes on Chase Brown just because a lot of Bengals fans are really excited about him. And I'm not trying to make it seem like he's a bad player or anything, but I don't think this dude is good enough to just come in as a rookie and just dethrone Joe Mixon for that RB1 spot. And we will see. That's why I have him on my watch list for players to watch. But I think he's somebody who still needs a year or two of development before he's able to take over the full workload of a RB1. And the last dude I'm going to be watching during training camp for the Cincinnati Bengals is going to be tied in Irv Smith. Now, Irv Smith was a second round pick years ago out of Alabama by Minnesota and I feel like he was severely underutilized during his time with the Minnesota Vikings and every single year there will be a lot of hype about him what he could do his athleticism and his upside and every single season I get let down now him going to Cincinnati I feel like could rejuvenate or kind of jumpstart his career now he only signed the one-year deal this offseason with Cincinnati and I think that Irv Smith can be pretty productive with the Cincinnati Bengals this year. Now, of course, you're going to ask JT, where are the targets coming from for Irv Smith when you already have to fight for targets with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd? Well, you got to remember that last year, Hayden Hurts had a really productive season for Cincinnati. I feel like he was kind of underrated. And although he didn't have numbers that are going to blow you away in the stat sheet, I mean, when you look at the kind of catches that Hayden Hurst made, he was pretty good. And I feel like last season probably was the most productive year of his career. And you look at Irv Smith, this is somebody who's going to be able to benefit playing alongside an incredible group of wide receivers. So there's going to be opportunities for him when those guys end up getting locked up 
which rarely happens. But when Joe Burrow needs to get the football out fast, I think Irv Smith could end up becoming a really favorable target for him. Irv Smith is more athletic than Hayden Hurst, in my opinion, and I think he's a better overall tight end than what Hayden Hurst brings to the table. I just think that Irv Smith is a guy who's been underutilized and being in an offense where you have so many great receivers is going to give you easy chances to make some big plays so don't be surprised if you see Irv Smith end up having some really good moments for Cincinnati this year I definitely want to see what he's going to do in training camp with Cincinnati playing with a elite quarterback in Joe Burrow I think Irv Smith could end up being a sneaky good pickup for the Cincinnati Bengals so this is my Cincinnati Bengals training camp preview let me know if there are some things that I miss that you're going to be looking out for, some players to watch, maybe a position battle that I didn't touch on.